this is just a test to see how well this works. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the vertical format of recording, but you know who cares? So you, you make sure you can get my get my hand gestures in here because this is this is primary. This is very important. <laughs> I just want to see how jumpy this is and uh, how much you can hear me. These are short trips, but they become productive because I just spend a lot of time thinking about it's like when I'm in transition, I can't, I can't busy myself with something. So my brain just gets to do whatever my brain wants to do, which is, it, tur it turns out to be pretty useful. I have ideas and implementations and, and stories, uh, even, that were uh, significantly progressed or conceptualized only on long driving trips. And this is from someone who had a, a three-hour commute every day for about six months, which, by the way, just about killed me. Uh, that's that's all God. <laughs> you, you you wake up on the road and you realize I was asleep, and you're like, "Huh, that's the opposite of good. <laughs> just just not worth it." My my Lord, wow. Anyways, talking to myself and figuring out some of these ideas and concepts made uh, made my trips much more fruitful and more uh, interesting, more engaging. So maybe that's what I hope to accomplish here. Let's see if I can put up with this, not having sunglasses on. I've been. Uh, listening to some Alan Kay who's one of the first people to well, one of the first people to compute like he, he was there at that that point when programming languages were being developed and uh, he talks a lot particularly about uh, object-oriented programming because what he sees today as what we see today as object-oriented programming is really a, a pale shadow of what he had intended it to be and he he said a few things that really stuck with me because they, they didn't make sense at the time because <clears throat> they didn't make sense at the time one was that an object is a server and that's a that's a weird thing to say uh, but he also said that if you understand GUIs you understand objects. And that was also something that was confusing to me. And it wasn't until I really understood where he was going with going with the concept of an object. I tried, I'm sorry. That we that it started to make sense. It's the idea is that the the object be so self-contained that you're basically that you are interfacing with it you're not commanding it. And he said that there's a difference between uh, a command and a request. And that difference is pretty significant. Because when you command an object, it's like, it's like the impetus is on you, the programmer, to command that object correctly. Rather than you, the programmer, to design the object such that it understands its commands. And uh, like immediately after watching that talk or listening to that lecture, I went and talked to uh, my boss and he was talking about how he was trying to dig back into some code and he'd only been away from it a month and he's like, Ugh, what was I doing here? I have to like backtrack and figure out what, what, I, what I was going for. And that just clicked perfectly with me because I've, I've definitely been there. It's I think every programmer has been there. You know, you fire up git blame to find out who's in trouble and it's you. 
<laughs> Who wrote this terrible code? Oh, oh, it was me. Um, but the, the concept that... It's, it's the idea that I'm the one in charge of the code and that the code needs to be written correctly and done correctly. And if it's not written correctly and done correctly, it's, it's my fault. Like, I'm supposed to keep up with it. I'm supposed to maintain it. And to an extent, that's right. But the question is... Why don't you make the program smart enough that you don't need to look at it? It doesn't need to be updated because it's either so simple that it's perfect the first time or darn near perfect the first time or it's so smart that it understands what it's supposed to be and not be and do and not do so that when you do something and this is from the uh, request versus command paradigm when you say Hey program, I really need you to to rm dash rf uh, forward slash. The program can say no, I'm not going to do that, and here's why. You don't have sufficient privileges to that. I think it's a bad idea. I don't think you should do it. And that's what we should expect of our program. That that's the concept, like the true concept of polymorphism. It's it's not necessarily that it's it's not, it doesn't care what input you give it or what object types or data types you give it. And then it's just, you've got like a catch for the different data types or something. It's, it's a program that understands input. It's a server. It's, it's an API. And I think that's a lot closer to what he was going for. The concept of an API is there's actual, there are rules and instructions, but there are also limitations. And there's access levels that have to be maintained in order for you to be able to accomplish whatever function you're trying to accomplish. If you don't have the level of access, the API says no. If you don't have the, the level of, uh, or if you have the wrong, uh, wrong syntax, the API says no. If you try to do something that uh, is, is dangerous, you, you might get warnings. Um, or denied outright. The idea that your code can be turned into these encapsulations of intelligence, I guess, is the like that 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 breaks the idea of I need to maintain this code or I need to make make sure that this code is right. I need to make sure I'm writing this code correctly. You make the code smart enough that it knows if it's being written correctly. Not if it's being written correctly. It knows if it's being used correctly or appropriately. And it's like, that's, that's huge. That's a, that's a paradigm shift. And that's something that hasn't happened. He goes off on HTTP and the, the, even the concept of a web browser. It's very interesting. So I'm trying to break down. I had a, um, a live stream this morning and I was just thinking about it like, I just got struck by this idea of a, a user interface and a user interface is the thing that decides how much garbage is going to be between you and what you want to do. So the question becomes, what is it you want to do? What is the, the order of, uh, what is the prioritized list of things that you want to get out of the program, the functions that you want to accomplish? And if you prioritize that list, how does the GUI how does a user interface, how much is it going to get in your way? I'm not, not being facetious about that. It's, it's an honest question. How much is this user interface going to get in your way? Um, because the most perfect user interface is, I think I want this function, and then the function works. So the, the next question is, how many steps does it take to get from, I think I want this function, to the program using that function or firing up that function? And if you have a macro pad, and it's one key press, doot, that's tied to uh, you know a series of keystrokes that goes alt, e, down, 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 right, m, tab, tab, and that puts you on the menu you want, on the tool item you want, in the actual field that you're likely to be adjusting sliders up and down, then that that's fast. You you have you've you've minimized that transition time. You've minimized the travel time. But just just think about GUIs or any type of any type of uh, object interface 
as how much is this going to get in my way? How much is this going to impede me from accomplishing what I'm looking for? It's an interesting way to think about it. Uh, also, I'm trying to learn, like I said, I'm trying to learn Lisp. Uh, and someone had said that learning Lisp will make you a better programmer. <laughs> Already seeing that and just thinking of things differently now, it's very strange. It's very strange. Uh, so check check out Alan K K A Y. Uh, he has very interesting talks. And uh, check a YouTube video out on why Lisp is different. Or video is probably going to be called "Why Lisp is Awesome," but I gotta get going. Uh, hope this helps. I hope this. I hope this worked. <laughs> I guess if you're seeing this on YouTube, then it worked. <laughs> so hopefully I'll be able to do more of these as long as they're of help.